Let's revisit two old friends. And no, don't worry, we're not going to spend hours and hours talking about this, but I want to drive some subtle points home. Let's take a simple little group box. We worked with this before. Drag and drop that on here. Let's take another one. Call that, we're going to call this one options. Let's call this one person. Now, does it really matter what these are named? There's group box underscore two and group box. Does it really matter? Graphically, they're very different and they look like they're going to serve very different roles. Now, when I say very different, they're just named different. But the end user is going to look at this and say, okay, so this should contain something about a person where there should be options of some kind. So that's what I'm really trying to drive in is your naming conventions. And let's actually just drag and drop another one on here. Let's call this food. You can see how just by labeling them, we have drastically different expectations as an end user. Person, options, food, and activities are all different. But the other subtle difference here is that this guy, group box two, options, now has two children. Whereas this guy does not have any. So how do we really get to these nestled children? Well, let's kind of take a peek at that. Let's say label, kind of drag and drop, drag and drop. Let's add some line edits, let's add some children in here. And let's call this email. Let's call this name. And let's give this a different naming convention. Uh, I've always used the txt prefix. We'll use le for line edit. And let's say le email, or if you're friends, it's a le email. Anyways, bad joke, sorry. And le name, actually it'd be la email. Would it la or le? Getting French and Spanish confused. Anyways, so let's call this le name. All right, now what we can do is we can grab this guy and just simply set him into a grid layout. We've done this before. This is really not rocket science. And we can kind of grab him. And just sometimes I'm not overly skilled with the mouse and the keyboard here. And we could rapidly build this layout. And let's drag and drop him here. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Now let's add some check boxes. And I think we've done something very similar to this before. And we're just going to add four check boxes in here. Let's grab this guy. Let's set that layout. And let's call this salad, pizza, ice cream. And chicken. Man, I'm getting hungry just looking at this interface here. And let's grab some more. Let's say move these over here. So you, we know what you want to eat. Now what do you want to do? You only have so many years, if you're lucky, to live in this world. What do you want to spend your time doing? Well, Netflix, of course. Um, let's see. Running. Maybe you like to paint. Maybe you're just a family person. And let's go ahead and set the layout on this guy. Yeah, we've done something like this before. Um, not too super complex. But you notice a fundamental difference. On some things, I'm worried about the naming convention. On other things, I just don't care. I don't really care that running is checkbox underscore six. So when should you care and when should you not care is often a question that comes up. Well, if you're going to have some sort of what I call a buildable option, for example, what type of food? I really don't care about the name because I'm not going to say, hey, did they specifically check salad? I don't care. What I do care is what foods they want. So we have a selectable option of some kind. But I do specifically care about their email address or their name. And let's kind of just work through this example here. So we're going to go to slot. We're going to say accepted. Go back here. Going to reject that. Take your rejection. All right, so let's go back here. Real simple. We're just going to bang out some code. All 
and we'll say Q message box. And we're going to look for the children in a Q group box. And let's say Q string get options. Maybe I'm a little challenged today. There we go. Right click, refractor. And let's go ahead and add the definition there. Pretty simple code, not doing anything super scientific here. And then we're going to just say, okay, we've got a group box, or I should say a pointer to it. Now let's get those selected options. So we'll say Q string value for each. And we're just going to bang out this code as fast as humanly possible. Q object. Well, let's actually call that object. And we're going to do that in the groups, children. And then we're going to say Q checkbox. We're going to do a Q object cast, which means we're just going to convert this or cast it. It's like casting a spell. That's actually how I explained it to a student one day. They said, well, can you explain cast? And I said, well, it's like casting a spell. You know, you're Harry Potter and you're going to uh, change one thing into another. So you're going to change Voldemort into a, a snail or something. All right, so we've got this, and we're going to say if we don't have a pointer, then we're going to return out because Q object cast will just return a zero instead of the actual pointer. However, if we do, we're going to say if chk is checked, hmm, why is it not liking that? I wonder if my editor is just being stupid. Sometimes it does this. I don't know why. So we have chk, chk. This is a good example of how sometimes the editor just betrays us. And I'm just going to say, is checked. Value append, chk. Once again, it has betrayed me. It's OK. We know what to type. And we're just going to say plus. And let's do slash r slash n. So we have got our Q checkbox here. And we're going to say Q object cast, Q checkbox, the object. So we're just casting here. We've got some errors. Let's go ahead and build this and see if it clears up or if we made a mistake. Nope. Non void function get options should return a value. Hmm. So let's return a blank Q string. Actually, no, we don't want to do that. We're going to say continue. Now they think about Because if we return, then we're going to miss all the other values. So we're going to continue. So we're going to jump back over this loop. Now we've got this. So let's go ahead and return something. So we're going to say return value. You see what I mean, though, by that editor thought that this was not a valid variable. But it absolutely is. There we go. So really all we're doing is we're saying take the group box go through its children. They're going to be pointers to Q objects. We're going to Q object cast into a Q checkbox. If possible, if not, we're just going to skip over this iteration. Um, then if it is checked, we're going to append the value and then just return the value. This is not hard. This is not rocket science. But there is fundamentally something I want to go over here. And I'm going to just copy and paste a little bit here, not a whole lot. You can see this code is very clear, very concise. We know exactly what it's doing. We have a Q string called message. We're going to append the email is the UI LE email text. So we know exactly what we're doing here, right? Let's give this a build. Everything runs just fine. And let's go ahead and a little more copy and paste action. Not too much more, I promise. Some people don't like it when I copy and paste. But... And we're just going to do this. And we're going to say, 
me at home.com versus my name. Now we have a fundamental problem. We want to be able to get the food and the activities. Look at the names of these group boxes, group three and group four. So let's get the food here. Let's jump in here and let's say We're going to say get options and we want the UI and group box three is our food. Well, that doesn't really help us a whole lot just looking at this code. And then we'll say and let's see group. Well, that's not very friendly group four. I mean, you can kind of see how it does work. Let's go ahead and show that it actually works. And we're going to append the food. And then let's go ahead and append the activities here. So let's say me at home.com whatever for a name and let's say I want pizza and ice cream and Netflix and family time. So it does actually functionally work. We can tell our email, our name, the foods, the activities, but just looking at the code, it's ugly. So this is where that delineation really happens between caring and not caring. If ever you're going to try to tie something from the UI directly to a variable name, that's typically when just me as an example, that's when I'll start naming things. And that's when I'll go in here and say GRP food. Let's call this GRP activities. That's kind of one of the little unhidden, unhidden, untold things that hides from you. They don't really tell you about. And then GRP. Now we've got a fundamental problem where you guessed it. The editor has not been rebuilt. So let's rebuild this. The UI has been rebuilt via the editor. Now this should actually work. Say GRP, there's our food. Now you can see that the string food is getting it from the group food and we're calling get options. So it's very clear, very easy to understand. We're not calling some weird group box four. Instead, we're gonna call group activities. And if you look at this, you can see that the options itself is actually group box two because I don't care about that. So again, kind of the fundamental concept we're driving home in this video is that when you're tying a UI element to a variable of some kind, that's typically when you want to worry about the naming convention. The results, absolutely the same. So then you may be wondering, that's embarrassing when you can't even spell your own name, you may be wondering who eats salad and chicken and who likes running and painting? Well, I do. But more importantly, someone else walking into this code can very easily see that this variable goes to that UI element, where if we named this group underscore 68, it's kind of hard, and then they got to go in here and figure out which one it actually is. And you can see right off the bat, well, they aren't really named right here. You could filter it out and look for it. You can move this around and figure it out, but it's not very user friendly. So when in doubt, again, UI element to variable, make sure you name it correctly. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a larger project out of Udemy called Cute Widgets for Beginners with C++. This is a large course with 73 lectures and 17 hours of video footage. This course covers everything from what is a widget all the way down to complete example applications using the skills you've learned in this course. Sorry, there's no QML in this course. This is strictly cute widgets. I will make a QML course later on, but this just focuses on widgets from a beginner's perspective. Even though this is a beginner's course, you do need to have some fundamental information available. You need to know C++ and the cute core libs. I do have some courses available out on Udemy, Cute Core Beginners, Intermediate Advanced. It's not necessary you take these courses, but it is highly recommended. And as always, I'm available out on the Voidrooms Facebook group, 
along with 3,000 other programmers. See you there.